So we got a bye for the first knockout round, but now the draw for the second knockout round sees Wolves back in the competition as we head into the last 16. Cue the theme song, because we could be drawing against a lot of big teams. So you've got Ajax, Benfica, Leon, Lazio, Atalanta. I mean, let's be honest here, basically any team we get would be a really tough test for us here. So let's just do the draw and see who we've got in the second knockout round. So we avoided Leon and Atalanta. Levante, because we had in a group. Lay, we've got Lazio. Ajax have FC Copenhagen. Royal Antwerp would eat lowest seeded side. They've got Fiorentina. Benfica versus Bruce Mitch and Gladbach. And we're the last team out of the hat. And we'll be facing Monaco with the first leg away. Wow, that was a, that was a long one there. Monaco away. As we know, uh, in France, we don't have the league unloaded. Or do we have league unloaded? No, we don't, of course. But they were runners up last season in the game. They do have a pretty decent side. There are some really good players in there. Demi Rao signed in the summer. I remember that clear. Carl normally does quite well. Areola has moved to Monaco as well. Golovin is great in the game. They've got some very decent players, I must say. Frimpong's moved there. Yeah, I've got to say, that's a, that's a tough tie, that. Monaco in the second knockout round. Hey guys, what is going on? And welcome back to another episode of the FM Reboot. It's episode number 40, and today we're returning with Midlands Derby as we face Aston Villa in a big game as they're battling for Europa League football and then Everton away in the FA Cup last 16. Before we get to the games though, shall we be getting on off camera? And not much to show you after the last episode where we agreed the sale of Ruben Neves for a docks record, 143 million uh, to Barcelona. That's of course going through in the summer. And I won a victory over the Owls, Sheffield Wednesday in the FA Cup fourth round. Played for the month of February. And as you can see, two wins and a draw in the Premier League and three straight clean sheets. This will be quite quick, actually. Started off with a 1-0 victory away in London against West Ham. Fabio Silva heading in a Buendia corner in a simple victory there. Then a late one, a victory against Leeds by a goal to nil at Molyneux. They went down to 10-0 a few minutes ago and we punished them for their man disadvantage. Raul Jimenez off the bench rescuing us. How many times have I said that? Rounding the goalkeeper and slotting in the only goal of the game. And the third and final game off camera was a goalless draw away at Stamford Bridge against Chelsea, a side we're battling with for top four football. And that was it. So unlike me, a very quick roundup of what's been going on off camera. As you can see, Wolves right now are in fifth. We just saw early today uh, Chelsea beat Man City. And look at how tight this is now. So Man City have dropped down to sixth place. We're ahead of them on goal difference and have the game in hand on them and Chelsea. They're a point above us right now, the Blues. And we're only three points behind Arsenal, though they've got a game in hand on us and two in front of Chelsea and Manchester City. So yeah, 11 games to go and it's so tight. I don't feel going to finish any lower than sixth at this point. But I mean, really, third to sixth, it's, I'd say that's where we're going to finish. But where we finish, we really don't know. It's tight. It's very tight indeed, I've got to say. The nerves right now are pretty crazy. Uh, so one thing I want to show you real briefly before we do dive into the first game of today's episode is now the dynamic screen. Now that we've agreed to sell it, Nevers, he's dropped the issue because he knows he'll be leaving in the summer. Everyone's happy right now. And as the hierarchy too, I wanted to show you this. Morton Forsby is up to team leader alongside Ruben and Raul as well. Once Nevers goes in the summer, I'd imagine Patricio is going to go back up there. But even so, for now, it's Raul, Ruben, and Morton, our current team leaders. Um, and I don't think there's anything else to show you off camera. So let's just dive into the first of the two games. Again, it is Aston Villa at uh, home. Uh, Molyneux in a Midlands derby. And again, a win will put us back in the top four for the first time all season? Not entirely sure. But um, yeah, so heading to the game, this will be our team. Uh, two players are down right now, Trincao and Diego Jota. So I've seen what day the uh, FA Cup uh, quarterfinal is coming. Trincao and Jota are both down with injuries right now. Uh, Jota might come out for the Everton game. Trincao probably won't feature today. And this will be our team. Patricio is in gold. About four is like Nuri. Eric, Big Chris and Samedo with Nevers and Forsby through the middle. Treor in NATO, the inside forwards. And Wendy sports Fabio Silva up top. One of which better. Nelly, McTominay, uh, Williams, Cater Jordan, Warprouse and Jimenez as well. First to two. It's a big one. Aston Villa in the Midlands Derby. A chance to get in the top four. Come on, Wolves. Do you want to know who's in charge of Aston Villa right now? This will blow your mind. Well, it won't blow your mind, but it's interesting. Fabio Grosso. Fabio Grosso is the Aston Villa manager at this point in the save. I've mentioned this before. It, it's so interesting to me. Not just how the team changes, how AI teams change over the years, but what they do with their managers as well. Fabio Grosso is now the current head coach of Aston Villa. 
never forget his goal back in that World Cup semi-final. What was that, 2006? Goodness gracious me. And a quarter of an hour in, and the first highlight is going to come to uh, Grosso's Aston Villa with Ramsey finding Masuaku down the left-hand side. He's got Forsby to beat and has beaten him as well. Can he cross? No, but Wanderson can, which he does. And Ramsey's shot deflects in off the post. <laughs> Seems like every episode there's something like this happening to us. Again, I'll always say it, luck will balance itself out. Well, we've had quite a bit of good fortune in the save, but Lord knows we've had a lot more <laughs> unlucky moments like this. Ramsey's shot takes a massive deflection off Ike Nuri and clips it off the post. I'm surprised you can claim that, because it looked like it was probably going wide towards the other post. Chance to get in the top four, and we're bottling it. Typical Wolves. Plenty of time. Plenty of time, though, as Forsby crosses and Silver heads over and just frustrated because again statistically we're doing fine out there but still find ourselves trailing sometimes you just got to accept that things probably aren't going to work out the way you want them no matter how hard you try no matter how badly you crave it it's just not going to happen for you i feel like that's how i got to accept things with wolves you know I don't know, I don't know what it is about this Wolves team, it's like every other save I do, I'm like, I know in like seven, eight seasons we'll be there, but this being our fourth, we're such a great team, and I'm still thinking, is it just this team? Are we just cursed? Am I a fraud? I mean, yes to that one, obviously, but still, right before the break, a chance to find our level, a silver to Traore, go on a dama, bends it off the post, and Aston Villa escape. We're so unlucky to be trailing. Free kick, 25 yards from goal, and a golden chance to find a leveller. And we've not done so because Martinez makes an extraordinary double save. First on Buendia, then on Bay. This is just going to be one of those games. We've done all the right things. We've only conceded one shot in the entire game. And we're down by a goal with 20 minutes on the clock. Ruben Neves floats in a free kick to the back stick. And Eric Bay is denied by another brilliant save from the former Arsenal goalkeeper. It's, it's just one of those games, man. you just got to accept them. It's such a hard pill to swallow you know like when you've done literally everything right in a situation and you just come up short because like you know in in moments in life where you haven't given your all or you haven't done your best and you don't come away with anything you can always put the blame on that you know you can always say you didn't try hard enough or you didn't do enough but sometimes you just you just have to say that's life <laughs> that's football manager I can't fault any of you for your performances. It was just one of those days. And it was, it's it's life and it's football in a nutshell. Sometimes you do everything right, but you just don't get the rubber to green. Sometimes you do everything right, but you still come out worse. It's so sickening. What have we got to do to get and stay in the top four, man? I just don't know. I mean, this is such a great Wolves team, man. Like, this is this is a well-run ship, if I don't say so myself. It's It's got star players, great youngsters. We, you know, we, we, we might not be the most experienced of teams. We've got a few players in the 30s that still play a role in the first team squad. I, don't, I, don't, I really don't know. I'm tired, boss. <laughs> I'm tired, man. I'm tired. Like, Carabao Cup final, this is an interesting one. Arsenal versus Southampton, and for our sake, we're going to be hoping that the Gunners win this one. And, well, that game was not as important as the Carabao Cup final game. Like, why would you default to that? No, it was Southampton, the one the Carabao Cup. Now, that's very interesting indeed, because the winners qualify for the Europa Conference League. Now, it shouldn't really affect things, but what it should do is that the uh, 7th should now drop off in the race for European football, I believe. Ooh. Ooh, interesting, very interesting. Yep, 7th has now dropped off, uh, which means only 5th and 6th are now available. And again, it's not Europa League they've qualified, it's Europa Conference League. So as things stand, 5th and 6th should still give you Europa League football, but 7th won't give you anything now. But we, 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 we knew that we didn't want 7th anyway, because I don't want the Europa Conference League. And again, 7th for me is probably... Avoidable. I think we should be able to stay in the top six and six at the very lowest regardless. But even so, interesting. Maybe it is just me, but I do feel like FM has gotten more difficult this year. And that's in many different aspects of the game, particularly uh, finding and signing young Wonder Kid regens. I think that's become incredibly difficult this year. 
But just in general, I have found the game harder this year than in previous versions. But again, I, I do kind of like it. I like to be challenged, and I certainly am in this save. I said when we took over Wolves in the very first episode, this is going to be a challenge. We're starting off with a good side, but the pressure was on from Season 1. And it's not dropping in Season 4. So heading into the second and final game of the episode, Everton away, Goodison Park, FA Cup last 16. Two FA Cup final appearances in three years, but this is a tough one away from home. So heading into the game, just the two changes to our lineup on the back of the loss there to Aston Villa, and this will be our team. We've got Patricia in goal. The back four is like Nuri, Eric, Big Chris, and Samedo, with Cater coming through the middle to play alongside Forbes. By the way, Cater this season, he's been... He's been quite poor in his debut year, I'll be honest. But 18 years old, I think you can give him some time, can't he? He's alongside Morton, Noah Trejo, and Nato, the inverted winger slash inside forwards. And when Deer Sports, Raul Jimenez back in the team, leading the line. Go on, trusty Raul. On the match, Bettinelli, McTominay, Neves, Jordal gives away. Warp Rouse and Silva as well. Second and final game, Everton away. I, I really feel we need to reach the quarters at least this year. Come on, Wolves. This season in the game, Everton not having a great year. Bottom half of the table right now. They're going to be safe. They're not going to go down, but it's not been one to remember um, for the Toffees. So I do I do feel favourites for the game. But I always say this. There's always a stage during a season, regardless of how good your team is, regardless of how well you're doing, where you're going to a bit of a slump. And I just feel this might be the time. I think it will be. It's unavoidable in FM. Like, there will be a part of a season, even if you are, like, the best team in the league, where you just won't be in great form and you won't be on top. That's just FM. That's just how it goes, man. And in our Fulham save, it was always mid-season. And with this Wolves team, this is March now. We've got massive games coming up, and it's kind of fitting for this series. It's a high-pressure time of the year. And we can't handle the pressure. It's been the case all throughout the series so far. It's just life. You know, it's just life. You're going to go through tough times. You're going to go through patches and stages in a year or two where you're really struggling and just can't get it sorted no matter how hard you try. It's just something you've got to live with, you know. Something you've got to accept. It's just how it is. I would say, based on what I've seen so far in the series... We will get there at some point, but there is, I don't know what it is, and don't ask me what it is, but there's just something about this Wolves team which just fills me with massive, massive doubt. I don't, I don't know what it is, I really don't. We've had a great base layer to start with. We brought in some fantastic players that have been regular starters in the faces of Buendia and Morton and Big Chris as well, but there's just something about this Wolves team. I don't know what it is. But I just don't feel like we're ever going to get there. And I hate to feel this way. Calvert-Lewin makes it to. We're out of the FA Cup. We're probably going out of the Europa League to Monaco. And we're still outside the top four. It's just going to be another season of pure frustration. God, I just want to win. I just want to win something before this save ends. I don't care what it is, man. Seriously. I mean, not the Europa Conference League, but something. Obviously, ordinarily, like, when you're going to end a save, it's when you've won the Champions League, you know, or you've, like, had an undefeated season, which I'm never going to have in FM. <laughs> I could play this game for the rest of my life and I'll never have an undefeated season. But like what I'm trying to say is that normally you end on like a, a massive high where you think you can't do any more than that. You know, you've won the Champions League or you've won the treble or again, an undefeated season and you can't get better than that. In this Wolves save, I'm not, I'm not going to lie. I genuinely think if we were to win the FA Cup, I'd probably say that'll do me. I'll have it there. I'll finish on that because at the moment, based on the things we've bottled, I just, I, do, I just, I don't, I can't imagine a situation where we're lifting the trophy. Is it me? I mean, almost definitely a silver rifles in a possible consolation goal, if nothing but a glimmer of hope for now. Uh, fabulous ball by K2. I sort of sneak dissed before the game. But Samira, as we know now, is going to be our long-term successor for Ruben Neves. And talk about your free balls. Ruben would be proud of that one. So it's 2-1. There's four minutes to go. I really can't see us finding a goal to force extra time. And I don't think we will. So there you go. Back-to-back -back losses after what was an okay stretch of form. And one trophy is gone. Unlucky boys. It would be nice to win there, but it wasn't to be. 
Never like to go harsh. I've thrown the water bottle once. It's not happening again. But that's it. We're out of the FA Cup. We remain outside the top four. But there's 10 games to go and there's only a point in it. I might be feeling defeatist after today's episode. But you know what? Perspective. There's plenty of the season left to go. And we're still in the Europa League as well. Let's not forget about that. So that won't be today's episode of the FM Reboot, guys. Big fan, you have enjoyed it. If you have, then please do drop a like. Much love to you. We've got to return with that Monaco game. I can't miss that one. First leg away in the south of France. And then Manchester United going for the title at home. So I think what we'll do, the next two episodes will be a foursome. So we'll have Monaco and Manchester United. And then the second leg against Monaco and Liverpool away. Let's do that. Have a great day, guys. Much love to you. And I'll see you next episode of the FM Reboot. Got to get back on track very soon.